everyone. Welcome to UMFM Suburban Home at Home. This is like the first edition of this. Um, I'm joined by Dead Broke from Toronto, a gothy and grungy indie rock band who are for fans of bands such as Royal Blood, July Talk, and Single Mothers. If you like synths and your punk, I'd say try this out. They put out their latest album, When the Night Comes In, on September 22nd, and as their latest batch of recordings since coming back from a hiatus. Uh, if you want to say anything else about that, uh, feel free. It's really just been about gathering the funds to put these out. We're a proudly independent uh, band, and uh, we've spent a lot of the time on the road in between recording. So any time that we have, um, we love putting that into new tunes and we're so excited to finally have a brand new batch of songs out. Yeah, we're uh, we're constantly working on Dead Broke, you know, in the shadows. Um, sometimes there's some, you know, duration of time that passes, but uh, we're always chipping away, um, trying to come up with something new and exciting for all the fans that have been with us for the last decade and, uh, and try to offer something up, something fresh and exciting for new listeners too. Yeah, totally. Um, so I'll just jump into this. When did you guys initially form? How many releases do you have? And when did you go on hiatus? Uh, your first. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so we initially formed in 2010 okay. and uh, that was between myself and uh, our drummer Evan Saunders and we were living in St. Catharines at the time um, both had prior uh, separate musical projects and we were high school best friends so uh, we decided to take uh, take our love for music and, and and continue pushing it and that's that's what kind of steamrolled into Dead Broke um, but ultimately with Rachel joining in 2013 is when uh, the band kind of become a little became a little more realized, um, and that led to our um, debut self titled self titled record. And so, uh, yeah, we we had an EP out before that, but uh, we essentially just kind of picture it as like that record being the first um, iteration of Debrook as we know it as a four piece punk rock and roll band. So we did that and uh, we had subsequent EPs that followed in 2017 and 2020. And uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say that the hiatus, uh, you know, was like any sort of mark in the sand. You have bands that announce that and, and take breaks, but uh, obviously with the uh, environment that COVID brought, um, there was a lot of limitations on what we could do. Uh, and that was right when we started recording the new record when the night comes in. So, um, despite some time away, um, myself and Rachel, uh, have never stopped working on it. And, um, yeah, we're excited to roll out all the things that we've been quietly chipping away at. Yeah. That'll be very exciting to see. Uh, and what was it like coming back after that hiatus? Did you have any, you know, performance anxiety, uh i guess release anxiety just anything like that no major anxieties i would say it was um it was definitely some pre-show jitters when we were coming back um but those are to be expected and that was more so out of excitement i would say we were just chomping at the bit waiting for things to open and waiting to even get together to jam um quote unquote safely so as, as soon as we could get back to it, um, I think we were all really, really excited to jump back in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and during the hiatus, or even like maybe before the hiatus, did you guys have any other bands or projects, like solo projects maybe, that you were involved in? Our guitar player, Zach, has a couple songs that he was working on just to keep his sanity. Yeah. So he's only shared those uh, with a few of us. And it's been really special to listen to um, and really just get a feel for, you know, what was going on in his corner. And um, 
I think, yeah, as, as, as we kind of came back, we had time to share a lot of what we were all working on. Michael had a lot of different seeds for songs. You know, we kind of dead brokeified, <laughs> and uh, a lot of those made their way onto the new album. So, I had um, I played guitar for a few solo artists who were good friends of mine. Cool. Um, Evan Red Sky, I we, we've been play, like gigging around for for years actually. Um, he put a put out a great record last year, and uh, yeah, I, I recorded on there as well. Um, I also toured extensively with uh, Eamon McGrath, who's a good friend of ours, nice. Canadian troubadour. He, he tours all the time. He's uh, one of the hardest working people I know. So, um, and he, he had, uh, he had his hands on, on the new record as well. He had helped me kind of demo and, and work on the pre-production of the direction where we wanted the record to go. Um, and then the other thing was um, I was going to be a touring guitarist for single mothers Mm. We go way back with them. And so, uh, yeah, we, we were going to, so in 2020, uh, we were about halfway through recording the, the dead broke record. And in March, uh, I was, I had signed on to do two months of touring with them. And so I was actually going to fly out on, I, if, if memory's correct, I think it was Friday, March 13th. Mm. And that was when the world shut down. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny because we didn't, no one had any idea of what was to come or, or the state of things. And um, part of me is like, do I just fly to the States and we'll, you know, this whole thing will blow over. And, you know, cause I had a flight booked and uh, I mean, ultimately I, I just, I said, you know what, we'll, we'll wait for the dust to settle and we'll figure this out. And uh, <laughs> here we are a few years later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, as far as Deb Broke goes, um, our first show back was with, um uh kids in the hall alumnist oh shoot i'm on the spot right now um they had a they had a cool band that they were doing like kind Mouth of a congress mix. yeah the cool um mix of comedy and i guess a little bit of punk in there yeah they were they were a queer uh punk rock band in the 80s that's and awesome. this that's mouth congress and they this predates the kids in the hall and uh, everyone in, involved in the project ultimately went on to work on that show as uh, guest actors or uh, uh, writers. And um, this was such a cool show. You know, we, we started getting offers for, for the first show back. And I mean, in the landscape, uh, you know, of the pandemic, I, I didn't want any sort of attempt at you know, a show, I, I didn't really have the heart to book something and then cancel it and reschedule it. It was just like, we're going to sit this out, you know, when the time is right, the time is right. <clears throat> and finally, this was the right show to do it. It was a really great first show back. Um, so much fun and so lighthearted yeah. of an energy for the room. Mm -hmm. Everyone just wanted to really be there and celebrate um, kind of live, live entertainment coming back onto the scene so it, it felt really good it felt very um homey yeah and it was um right along the lot with the relaunch of uh the kids in, a, in the hall series that came out last year so it just felt like a, a really cool thing to be involved in you know what i mean just, mm -hmm. uh, it just felt like a big time for music and comedy and, and entertainment and those are all you know really important things to us so that first show back i had this big dumb grin on my face the whole time like it, <laughs> It uh, yeah, it was a really great time, and um, yeah, we're we're so happy to be finally, yeah, to finally have the record out, and uh, you know, it's 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 been on the front of our minds for the last three or four years, and um, you know, it's it's very surreal that it's finally here, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we can talk about the songs themselves, uh, and I guess the album itself. Uh, I note that you work with Alex Bonafant, I think that's how you say it, uh, who has also worked with Mets, The Weeknd, July Talk, and uh, some other artists. Uh, what was it like working with Alex, and what is your history with him, if, if you have any? 
You want me to do this or you want to run it? Yeah, Michael um, formed a really good friendship with Alex um, over the years since our first introduction, doing a Converse um, live tracking session with him. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Where do I start? There's so much to cover. Yeah, so leading up to the release of our self-titled uh, record, um, we got invited to do this session for Converse. And so they put us up in a great studio for the day and they gave us all shoes. <laughs> I still have those. I still wear them. <laughs> I try to take good care of them. So we were at Noble Street, which is an incredible studio in Toronto, like probably one of the nicest studios in Canada. And I mean, we were quite young at the time. We're going back like nine years, you know. Uh, so to be working in a studio of that stature with, a you know, a producer that was really like, you know, kind of stacking up the accolades. It was, uh, it was definitely intimidating. Um, but as soon as we got to work, uh, we realized that Alex was a punk rocker. <laughs> he, he loved what we were working on. And um, ultimately that all went into a video that's online. Um, it's bullet. So it's, it's us doing a live off the floor of kind of one of our heavier songs. Um, and I was, you know, after that date, we had parted ways and, you know, Toronto's a big city, but the music scene is small. So we'd kind of catch up at parties or shows and um, kind of keep in touch. But yeah, he and I ran into each other in 2019. And um, he was he was looking for a new project to sink his teeth into. And we were looking for a new producer to bring us to, a, a, you know, do something different for the next record. We, we didn't want to be this lo-fi garagey punk band forever like um we, we've got a wide taste in music and we wanted to experiment with you know higher fidelity and higher uh, like just a um kind of take the production value up a notch so we we had coffee and uh we had chatted at length and um yeah maybe a few weeks later we were back in studio with him and ultimately a, a really great friendship was was bloomed out of that you know uh, working with Alex was just so great with us because we could connect on so many things I mean our uh we we had parallel like kind of growing up stories um Rachel was born in New Brunswick and that was the first home that I knew when my, our parents had moved from Toronto out there and uh Alex's family was also from New Brunswick and then later moved to Toronto so we connected on a lot of things and the relationship kind of went farther than just like a transactional one of us hiring someone to bring the songs to fruition and then saying, see you later. Um, now he's, he's one of my best friends and uh, he's, he's been an incredible um, mentor, I, I guess I would call him. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's been so great seeing him put so much um, into our project, but a lot of love, a lot of care. He really he cradled it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. He, he brought it um, to where it is now. And, um, yeah, ultimately it was, it was a life-changing experience. Yeah. And it always feels like such a, um, a comforting environment. Anytime we step into studio with Alex, he's always so encouraging and, um, honestly, just so, like, so full of love, like <laughs> just ready to, ready to rock and, um, always super encouraging anytime we're taking runs at different parts. Um, you know, yeah. Oh, it's it's been it's been a really special uh, bond that we've been forming with him, and um, I'm glad that he's become such a close friend of the band. For sure. Uh, what was the writing and production process for uh, this album? Everyone has their own way to do it, of course. Like some bands, they're in the studio for twelve hours a day. Uh, sometimes it's just two of the band members doing stuff in a basement on a four track. So what was it like with Alex and the others? It's almost like a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. um, like Michael mentioned, he had a couple um, ideas that he wanted to demo with Eamon. And so they they had worked on those. And I remember in 2017, Michael dropping me off at, at my place. And we were listening to those on the van stereo. And it just, there's something about it. We were like, I think there's something here. We got to keep chasing this. 
so we held on to that and, and uh, kept jamming that. So it, it definitely takes time of, you know, nurturing the songs and um, and sort of playing with sounds and um, sections of the songs or arrangements, if you will, um, with the band kind of dead brokeifying things. But Michael had a, a definitely a good handle on the vision of where he he saw some of those that he wanted to bring them. Um, and then we had some studio session days beginning 2019 that would span probably maybe a year ago, less than a year ago, where we really finished everything up. Mm -hmm. um, and in those days with Alex, you know, feeling things out, you know, I think something cool might be able to be added in this part. And then um, we'd break out, you know, two or three different pianos and Mike would be tinkering or, um, yeah, just, just taking our time with things, but also just, you know, continuing to follow your gut of where the song can just bloom on its own. Did yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Rachel kind of covered most of it. The song started as these kind of ideas rolling around my head. And I found that my songwriting styles changed in the years where like now, you know, initially it'd be like sitting at a guitar and be like, all right, this is the song. And now it's almost like the last thing I do is pick up the guitar. I'm kind of just, they kind of float around my head until they make sense. And then it's like, okay, let's commit this to something. And so we started, that's what I started doing with Eamon and, and then, you know, brought the ideas for the band and then the band kind of goes, oh, I like this, or I don't like this, or what if we do it this way? Or, you know, we, we massage the arrangement a little bit. And then by the time we got to Alex, um, he really pushed me kind of in ways that have now changed my approach. Um, and that came down to ultimately like the melody of the vocals, you know, how do we want this to sound? He, 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 he would just, he's like, you need to figure, <laughs> you need to figure this out before you even take a run at the vocals. Right. So, um, something like that, or, or just even freshening up the arrangements being like, okay, this is, this is getting stale. Let's, let's throw a curveball in here. And so, yeah, it's, um, it just goes through a, a metamorphosis, you know, of, of changes. And it's so cool now because I can go back in my phone and I can find those initial voice notes of like, you know, me humming something or running some like lyrical ideas and um, to see how far those ideas have come and kind of what, what made the record and what didn't. Um, it's always interesting. And I really like it when... Um, kind of more established groups will be a little more, um, what would we say here? Open or, uh, or, I don't know, naked to how their demos sound. Some bands you'll see they'll, they'll publish the demos or like cheap recordings. And yeah, there's just, there's an amazing quality to that because that's, that was the inspiration or that first seed of idea. Yeah, and totally. It's like totally authentic. Yeah. yeah you you can hear the human element to it you know and and that's everything that's like even the air of a room you know hearing someone's voice and maybe knowing that they were in i don't know their basement making this or a friend's garage or whatever yeah. it just it's so beautiful that yeah. kind of any space can inspire something yeah. that will move them down the road a little more yeah i think uh, this batch of songs was um was very I, I think probably the closest batch of songs like to Michael um in terms of like really coming from him and like this big kind of growth spurt that he's um jumped into um a lot of the other songs I mean we well a lot of the songs that we have put out but a lot of the songs that we um have almost ready to be recorded sort of soon um not to jump too far ahead but those ones can come straight out of jams practices um just getting together being in a room so a lot of our a lot of our recordings or a lot of our songs kind of really do come from all of these different um situations like you said do they do they come out along studio days yes a lot of oh, yeah. these songs have come out along studio days 
have they come from being alone trying to figure out your parts and you know um, just nail it in your own space yes it came from that um there's there's been many different <laughs> ways that we've tried to figure it out I, I i think we've figured it out on this one nice yeah and i like what michael said about again uh the you know fi uh like bands and artists who have uh demos or even just songs and recordings where you can hear um like the air of the recordings i guess the, the air of the room um you know that that reminds me uh Haley williams uh when she released her first album uh there's a song on there i believe dead horse where you can hear her like dog barking in her living room and it like totally sounds like a like demo on her on her phone where she's doing the piano part and then it goes into the full on song which is really cool and really like authentic and yeah i just love that yeah that's cool yeah i mean that's something i definitely want to hear more from artists it's like we we, we live in such like a pop centric time right now and maybe maybe we always have but um everything is just so like polished. And I, I think that's what I love about our band is like, even, even us wanting to, you know, kind of go a higher notch on something that has a, a kind of a richer, deeper sound to it. Um, you're still getting the scrappiness of our punk rock roots. And uh, that's why I call it, I've been calling it like graduated punk rock or like real, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. because yeah, it's like, like you mentioned in the intro, there's synths on this record and, it was just, I think that that is punk rock. It's, um, it's taking chances. It's stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's experimenting and changing and challenging, expect challenging expectations yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. of what it is to be punk. Like punk is anything. Punk is being yourself. Yeah. 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 I like that line of thinking. Totally. Uh, so you guys released your first EP and album around 2014 or so. Would you guys say you learned anything, whether it be a lesson or a mistake, uh, that made following, made making following records, including this one, a more enjoyable experience? Um, well, that first record was done all live off the floor in, I think, a week. Less than a week. Yeah. yeah, less than a week. So that was a really fun exper experience. But um, there is something definitely to be said for taking your time in the studio, maybe um, breaking it down into chunks where you can really focus in on each song and, and give it the, you know, full attention. Yeah. Um, those the the songs on the first album came from, you know, just a just a place of just like let's get it going Let, like just hungry punks just like grinding it out and that that was such a cool like fun memory um but i think on the idea of graduated punk rock we're we're kind of uh just taking new approaches and it, it's been feeling really satisfying to be honest yeah yeah for sure um now uh, for one of your music videos, uh, not there yet. It was directed by Brittany Farhat, who has directed a July Talk music video, and I are not a music video, a film. But regardless, uh, I'm a huge fan of July Talk. Uh, I don't know if you can see it because my camera's really bad but the okay. only vinyl record i have is uh their latest record <laughs> oh i see it uh so yeah i'm a huge fan of july talk what was it like working with Brittany? well Britt has been in our circle for quite some time um she's helped film some live off the floor stuff with us yeah. from you know spanning 10 years mm -hmm. back probably and so it's been really amazing watching her grow in her um, in her field and um, it's been it's been really really exciting um, having her come back and, and and work with us again 
and having her equally excited to step back into the dead broke world. So Michael and I were out here shooting on our Super 8 um, down in Colorado, um, visiting a family, which we're here now too, actually. Um, and so we sent out all those files to her and had her kind of work her magic and help help us build the story that we were envisioning. And it was really, really special to kind of come full circle with her again. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, um, Britt was like huge in the scene when we were first getting gigging um, and just a great spirit. I mean, a true like love of art, you know, um, always in the pit, taking photos, so happy to meet anyone, not, not an ounce of pretension there. And um, yeah, we were really excited to see that. Yeah, how, how far and, and how much has been built. And it's just, a, you know, a testament to like uh, following your own path and um, bring, bringing yourself to the table. And you kind of, you never know where that's going to take you. Um, yeah. <laughs> we love you, Britt. <laughs> yeah. So I have some... I guess some wrap up questions that I'd like to ask. Uh, they're kind of just like all over the place, but I'd like to still sure. ask them. Uh, so what would you guys say are your main influences uh, between yourselves and just as a collective band? In regards to bands that we like and music styles that we like? Yes. Uh, well, I think all of us really grew up on classic rock. Um, so there's always going to be a hint of that in there, along with, you know, blues and a little bit of like, you know, soul and whatnot. But um, punk obviously hit really hard for all of us. And mm -hmm. uh, likewise with, um, you know, post-punk and hardcore and there, there's so much, even like there's a lot of rap albums that we all love too. Um, but you know, Queens of the Stone Age, the Stooges. Um, Mark Lanigan. Mark Lanigan, he's great. God, there's so many. Tenarwayan, do you know them? Sorry, who? Tenarwayan. Um, I don't they're, they're think this, like, so. They're this like, I don't know, force of nature. Uh, they're this, uh, there's the, this group from the Sahara Desert. And they've been, they've been around for a long time. They were like these uh, traveling outlaws at one point, <laughs> wanted by their government. <laughs> and uh, they they made their own instruments and they made their own um, recordings on cassette tapes. And they were kind of this like bootleg thing getting passed around. And, you know, when you ask about influence, yeah, there's there's been a lot of great bands, there's a lot of bands that we definitely enjoy. But um, I think for us, like punk rock changed everything. Um, it demystified um, and kind of took away the limitations, you know, uh, classic rock, you know, your bands like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, all these larger than life acts. And it's just like, oh, they play stadiums and they have 20 trucks full of lighting rigs and pyrotechnics and all of this like fanfare. And then, you know, right when you're in your teenage years and you're discovering local shows you know from a poster that you saw at a, a bus stop or a intersection and you show up and there's people there and some bands you've never heard before traveling in minivans or <laughs> cars and any way that they could make it work um that's what inspires me and and all of us yeah and everybody else like being on the road um and forming those connections and in 2023, I mean, there's no harder time to be in a band. Uh, just the sheer cost of everything, you know, moving people around, gas guzzling vans, you know, hotel, all that, all that stuff. So right now, I think the most inspiring thing for us is seeing anyone try to figure it out and try to make it work for themselves. Um, and you asked about, oh, were there any regrets or did you learn anything from your first record? It's like when we did that first record, uh, 
it was a complete independent thing. Like we just figured it out, you know, like we figured out, oh, we want to do this on vinyl. How do we do that? And then after that, it's like, oh, we need to go on the road like all these other bands do. How do we do that? And, you know, we get visas and we start finding fans down in the States and we start traveling to them. And and in that period of time, you know, we got a lot of uh, advice, uh, advice we asked for, a lot of unsolicited advice. Oh, you guys should really do this or you got to do this next time or you guys should really like talk to this label and all of this stuff. And, you know, we came at this next record with like, okay, well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try some of those avenues, but ultimately uh, we decided, Hey, we know what we're doing here. And um, we want to keep that independent spirit alive. And we had a vision for the record and kind of the next few years of dead broke. So we're, we're, waving that do-it-yourself banner and um yeah everything you see here right now we there's no unfortunately there's been no arts funding for us um there's no label it's just like we work we work jobs rachel and i both work very hard um manual labor jobs mm -hmm. and um and we put that money into this because we love it and we want to just continue to hopefully inspire some people to start some bands and, and keep things going. And, and like I said, coming out of COVID, like it's so cool right now seeing the next wave of bands and artists figure it out, you know, the DIY shows and making a work in a city as expensive as Toronto. So anyone doing it right now, that's who ins inspires us. And you gotta uh, keep everybody protected and keep bringing it all up bring everybody up together um, but on a lighthearted note if we were to come up with some bands b-52s oh yeah i love b-52s huey lewis <laughs> david bowie david bowie um when we were younger oh gel oh yeah you oh, know gel, gel? so sick gel the uh hardcore band yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, i yeah. love gel yeah, yeah. That band makes me so happy. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, do, do you guys know Scowl? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're so good. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, how about Drain? Drain, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of great bands. Are hard. Honestly, hardcore is, like, really having a moment right now. It's so oh, cool. Totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, like, again, it's, it's a counterculture movement, and it's huge. Like, you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't ignore it anymore. I mean, especially like here in America, like the shows are massive and they're a lot of times they're just like, again, in the DIY sphere. Um, I was on a hardcore tour a few years ago and yeah, we like show the venue was like uh, a vacant unit in a strip mall, you know, so something the size of like, you know, uh, a shopper's drug mart or something like that was this hardcore venue that you know a thousand hardcore kids pull up to and yeah it's, it's pretty cool to um to see the bands popping off right now for sure yeah for sure um now i have like one more question uh zoom timer gives me five minutes left so uh see if we can Dude, do this. i didn't realize we we're being timed <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh well um is there any bands in Toronto or even nationally in Canada that are small that you would like to give a shout out? Yeah. How many, how many can we list? <laughs> Roach, Burner, Indian Giver. Indian Giver is cool. Those are friends of ours. It's an all indigenous hardcore group. Yeah. And they might be one of the first. I mean, they're doing really cool stuff right now. Um, we got a lot of friends. Lots of friends. That's the cool thing. We have a lot of friends in, in bands. I don't know if we could swear, but uh, there's this yeah. band from Hamilton, friends of ours called Golden Shitters. <laughs> and it's nice. like, how much more Hamilton can you get? They're awesome, though. Um, Dave Tyson from Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs plays in that band. And mm. Kyle Fisher from The Nil is drumming mm. for them. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Who else we Who else we digging? Um, Eamon. Yeah, Eamon McGrath. McGrath. He's like a continued inspiration. He's really a supporter of ours. So much love to Eamon. Um, oh, there's lots. Just support support the scene. Support Canada. Yeah. yeah. Find a punk show. Yeah. All of our cities are very far apart from, from each other. 
it's really cool how connected we can all stay through music. Yeah, for sure. Uh, start a band, uh, perform at your local venue, perform at your local uh, dive bar. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how, that's how you get into the scene. That's how uh, it starts. You yeah. know, um, start going to shows. <laughs> Start going to shows, start meeting people. It's a really great um, community out there. And that's honestly what what keeps us actively coming back. You know, it's uh, there's some really great people out there. And it's just, it's just it's such a unique way to connect. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Play anywhere you can. That's what we did. We played anywhere you can imagine. First show was at a skate park. Uh, we played pizza shops shawarma joints <laughs> we have a uh kind of a motto it's like if it's got a zip code we'll be there you know that's awesome yeah it's got a if it's got a three-pronged power plug yeah we'll do it so <laughs> yeah um so yeah this th thank you for joining me uh this was dead broke from toronto uh they're a gothy and grungy indie rock band if you like synths and your punk and that kind of stuff. Bands like Royal Blood, Single Mothers, July Talk. Definitely check them out. Uh, check out their newest album, When the Night Comes In, which came out last week. And yeah, thank you again. Thanks so much, Justin. Appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah, have a good one. Have a good night. And uh, best best travels wherever you are. And yeah. Thanks so much. Same to you. Thank you.